and welcome to an episode which deals in color photography. The subject expert for today is Mr. Barun Kumar, professional photographer working as senior photographer with fabfashion.com and I am Sakshi Mandwal. <laughs> Objectives Understanding the importance and need of color in photography Understanding the transition from black and white to color film Comprehending the various stages of color film evolution Understanding the color film properties Understanding the color control Introduction Color photography is the production of colored images by photographic process. A variety of dyes are used to produce the colored images in photochemical processes. Such processes may or may not use silver to produce the colored image. Color photographs may also be produced by electronic cameras. In color photography, light sensitive chemicals or electronic sensors record color information at the time of exposure. This is usually done by analyzing the spectrum of colors into three channels of information. One dominated by red and the other by green and the third by blue in imitation of the way the normal human eye senses color. The recorded information is then used to reproduce the original colors by mixing various proportions of red, green and blue light, RGB color used by video displays digital projectors and some historical photographic processes or by using dyes or pigments to remove various proportions of the red, green and blue which are present in white light, CMY color used for prints on paper and transparencies on film. There are basically two color systems, additive primary colors. Computers and digital cameras are able to create the vast range of colors by mixing different proportions of the three additive primary colors. These are red, green and blue. Red, green and blue, often abbreviated to RGB, are the additive primary colors of light. The ones that your camera sees and that every computer, monitor and TV throughout the world uses to display its images. Mixing all three additive primaries together gives us white. These three colors enable our camera to capture a vast array of colors, but by no means all colors. Subtractive primary colors. Subtractive primaries are the colors used by most printers, usually cyan, magenta and yellow and abbreviated to CMY. These are called subtractive primaries as the pigments or dyes that make up the ink or paint absorb or subtract specific colors from the white ambient light which is illuminating them. For example, the cyan ink will absorb red light but not the green and blue. If we mix all three subtractive primaries, then the ink is absorbing all three additive primaries. RGB in the ambient light and so we end up with black. In reality, we usually end up with a muddy brown color. Therefore, a fourth pure black ink is often used. This is called the key color and is why this color system is abbreviated to CMYK. The K is a black component normally added in inkjet and other mechanical printing processes to compensate for the imperfections of the colored inks used, which ideally should absorb or transmit various parts of the spectrum but not reflect any color and to improve image definition. RGB, the additive primary colors. When these three colors of light are mixed together, you get white. CMY, the subtractive primary colors. When paints or inks of these three are mixed together, they give black. History of color photography. 
Early experiments in color photography could not fix the photographs and prevent the color from fading. The first permanent color photographic image was made in 1861 by James Clerk Maxwell, a Scottish scientist. Maxwell used the additive theory developed by Thomas Young and refined by the German scientist Hermann von Helmholtz. The additive theory was based on the principle that all colors of light can be mixed optically by combining in different proportions the three primary colors of the spectrum red, green and blue RGB. Maxwell used color separation method, shooting three separate black and white photos using three filters, red, green and blue. Each camera had these color filter in front of lens. He then projected the three images registered with their corresponding filters, overlapping them to create a color image. The photo below is the famous tartan ribbon photo, the first permanent color photograph. Gabriel Jonas Lippmann won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1908 for the creation of the first color photographic process using a single emulsion. The color fidelity is extremely high, but the images cannot be reproduced and viewing requires very specific lighting conditions. The development of the autochrome process quickly rendered the Lippmann method redundant. The method is still utilized to make singular images that cannot be copied for security purposes. The first commercial successful color process, the Lumiere Autochrome, invented by the French Lumiere brothers, reached the market in 1907. It was based on an irregular screen plate filter made of dyed grains of potato starch which were too small to be individually visible. The light-sensitive emulsion was coated directly onto the screen, eliminating problems due to imperfect contact between the screen and image. Reversal processing was used to convert the negative image, which was initially produced into a positive image, so no printing or screen registration was required. The shortcomings of the autochrome process were the expense, one plate cost about as much as a dozen black and white plates of the same size, the relatively long exposure times which made handheld snapshots and photographs of moving subjects impractical and the density of the finished image due to the presence of the light absorbing color screen. Viewed under optimum conditions and by daylight as intended, a well-made and well-preserved autochrome can look startlingly fresh and vivid. Unfortunately, modern film and digital copies are usually made with a highly diffused light source, which causes loss of color, saturation and other ill effects due to light scatter within the structure of the screen and emulsion and by fluorescent or other artificial lights which alters the color balance. The capabilities of the process should not be judged by the dull, washed out, odd colored reproductions commonly seen. Millions of autochrome plates were manufactured and used during the quarter century before the plates were replaced by film-based versions in the 1930s. The very last film version, named Alticolor, brought the autochrome process into the 1950s, but was discontinued in 1955. Many additive color screen products were available between the 1890s and the 1950s, but none with the possible exception of Dufay color introduced as film for still photography in 1935 was as popular or successful as the Lumiere autochrome. The most recent use of the additive screen process for non-digital photography was in polychrome, an instant 35mm slide film introduced in 1983 and discontinued about 20 years later. Because autochrome was a color transparency and could be viewed only by reflected light, however, researchers continue to look for improvements and alternative color processes. With the improvement in color materials and processes, the first modern integrated tri-pack color film, Kodak Chrome was introduced in 1935 based on three colored emulsions. One year later, in 1936, the German AFCA followed with their own integral tripack film, Akfa Color New, 
which was generally similar to Kodachrome but had one important advantage. Akfa had found a way to incorporate the dye couplers into the emulsion layers during manufacture, allowing all three layers to be developed at the same time and greatly simplifying the processing. Most modern color films, excepting the now discontinued Kodachrome, use the incorporated dye coupler technique. By 1960, color was much more common. But color film and color paints still cost several times as much as black and white. Instant was introduced by Polaroid in 1963. Like Polaroid's contemporary instant black and white film, their first color product was a negative positive peel apart process, which produced a unique printout paper. The negative could not be reused and was discarded. The blight created by carelessly discarded caustic chemical laden Polaroid negatives which tended to accumulate most heavily at the prettiest, most snapshot worthy locations horrified Polaroid founder Edwin Land and prompted him to develop the later SX70 system which produced no separate negative to discard. Some currently available color films are designed to produce positive transparencies for use in slide projector or magnifying viewer, although paper prints can also be made from them. Transparencies are preferred by some professional photographers who use film because they can be judged without having to print them first. Transparencies are also capable of a wider dynamic range and therefore of a greater degree of realism than the more convenient medium of prints on paper. The early popularity of color slides among amateurs went into decline after the introduction of automated printing equipment started bringing print quality up and prices down. Other currently available films are designed to produce color negatives for use in creating enlarged positive prints on a color photographic paper. Color negatives may also be digitally scanned and then printed by non-photographic means or viewed as positives electronically. Unlike reversal film transparency processes, negative positive processes are within limits for giving of incorrect exposure and poor color lightening because a considerable degree of correction is possible at the time of printing. Negative film is therefore more suitable for casual use by amateurs. Virtually all single use cameras employ negative films. Photographic transparencies can be made from negatives by printing them on special positive film, but this has always been unusual outside of the motion picture industry and commercial service to do it for still images may no longer be available. Negative films and paper prints are by far the most common form of color film photography today. In August 1981, Sony released the Sony Mavica electronic still camera, the camera which was the first commercial electronic camera. Images were recorded onto a mini disc and then put into a video reader that was connected to a television monitor or color printer. However, the early Mavica cannot be considered a true digital camera, even though it started the digital camera revolution. It was a video camera that took video freeze frames. In 1991, Kodak released the first professional digital camera system, DCS, aimed at photojournalists. It was a Nikon F3 camera equipped by Kodak with a 1.3 megapixel sensor. The first digital cameras for the consumer level market that worked with a home computer via a serial cable were the Apple QuickTake 100 camera, 1994, the Kodak DC40 camera, 1995, the Casio QV11 with LCD monitor, 1995, and Sony Cybershot digital still camera, 1996. After 1995, color film was relegated to a niche market by inexpensive multi-megapixel digital cameras. Film continues to be the preference of some photographers because of its high image quality when used with a high quality camera and lens and its distinctive look. There are two main types of color film in current use. Color negative film. Color negative film forms a negative color reversed image when exposed which is permanently fixed during developing. 
This is then exposed onto photographic paper to form a positive image. Color negative films have the coupler components of the dyes incorporated in the emulsion layers at the time of manufacture. After exposure in the camera, they are developed in a color developer which produces a dye image along with a silver image in each layer. The dye images perform exactly the same function that they do in the case of reversal color films. That is, each one controls the transmission through the processed film of the primary color of light which was used to expose that layer. Thus, the same colors are used, cyan in red, sensitive bottom layer, magenta in the green sensitive middle layer and yellow in the blue sensitive top layer. After color development, the silver images formed along with the dye images are removed by bleaching and fixing. The dye images which remain are negative with respect to the tone gradations of the original subject and taken together, they are approximately complementary to the colors of the subject. Color Reversal Film Photography film that can be processed to produce a positive transparent image for direct projection rather than a negative for printing. Color reversal film also known as slide film forms a negative image when exposed which is reversed to a positive image during developing. The film can then be projected onto a screen. Reversal film is produced in various sizes from 35 mm roll film to 8 into 10 inch sheet film. Controlling color. Color photography to control color is very important thing. Color can help tell us stories visually and it can be used to communicate on an emotional level. Color is the primary factor responsible for making a photo feel exciting, lively, mysterious or perhaps melancholic or a little somber. The initial stage of color control. To begin with, in film cameras there are two types of films. Daylight film, balanced for daylight and tungsten film, balanced for use with 3400 degree K light, like motion picture studio lights. There were a whole lot of specialized filters made to correct the color temperature of the light striking the film. Some were called warming filters, used when shooting during overcast days or in the shadow. Others were cooling filters used when using daylight film under incandescent lamps. If the actual color temperature was under 3400 degrees K, they were used. Household incandescent lamps are usually 2800 degrees K. There are also color correction filters for use under fluorescent lighting, daylight film and tungsten film. They worked pretty well before all the different types of fluorescent bulbs entered offices and homes. The only tungsten film available now is transparency film. For most shots taken with color negative film, the auto color correction feature on new photo printers correct images shot under incandescent lighting to make prints that are good enough. <music> color control in digital photography white balance explained with the help of digital the latest technology cameras correct the color of different types of light by using white balance the white balance setting we choose will change the color balance in pictures making it warmer or cooler depending on how the sort of light we are shooting in affects things using auto white balance is the simple option but cameras white balance presets give more control over color. The color of the light will affect the colors in photographs. We probably won't notice this with the naked eye because our minds adapt very quickly to perceive the color of the light as neutral even when it's not. The camera is less forgiving and records colors exactly as they are. That's why pictures taken under household lighting have an orange color cast and pictures taken at dusk or dawn have a cold blue look. Digital cameras have white balance controls to correct these color shifts. This adjustment happens when the camera processes and saves your picture. 
For example, if we take a picture under incandescent lighting, the camera can reduce the amount of orange in the colors and boost the blue to produce more neutral colors. Many digital cameras offer a number of white balance settings, some for specific lighting situations. Auto, the default works in a wide variety of lighting conditions. Daylight is best when photographing outdoors in bright sunlight. When photographing indoors, if we like the warm glow of incandescent lights, we can capture them with this setting. Cloudy is best when photographing outdoors in cloudy or overcast conditions. Incandescent or tungsten is best when photographing indoors under incandescent lights. Fluorescent is best when photographing indoors under fluorescent lights. Flash is best when photographing with flash. In fact, flash is daylight balanced, so it's an ideal way to remove color casts in some lighting situations. Color temperature lets you select a specific setting from the Kelvin scale. In a studio where you know the color temperature of the lights, you can set the camera to an exact match. In other settings, you can use a color meter to determine the setting you should make. Manual or custom lets you set white balance manually by aiming the camera at a piece of white paper or gray card. Photography is an art which depends on technology. And as the technology progressed, the progress in photography is a continuous process. We came a long way from the days of black and white. As the technology improved, we started taking color pictures. Kodachrome made color photos possible for everyone to take. Then Ektachrome made it possible for people to process their own film. And the E6 processing started an era where a lot of manufacturers started making films which could be processed in a smaller labs, uh, even at home, with a kit which could, be very, which could develop films very, very fast, you know, very quickly. After this revolution, then, you know, people started using uh, high color, uh, high temperature processing method where the processing time was cut down. And commercial processing in a smaller lab uh, became possible. Soon after that, another revolution took place. And the second revolution is about digital photography. Uh, after color um, was uh, quite popular, then uh, the development of digital photography and especially cheaper digital camera made it possible for everyone to afford a camera now and take a picture without investing so much money in processing, printing, storage and other um, such things. And the color it uses the color digital photography uses sensors and these sensors till now record colors in three different pixels and uh, they still use RGB and they still are an analog uh, system which is converted to dig digital uh, signal and then it is uh, stored after getting processed. Now there are several kind of sensors there you know we started you know we have we had CCD uh, um, sensors which were quite popular then we went when when the need to f faster you know there was a need to the process should be uh, processor should be be fast it should it can take image, images and the image data can be read faster then we switched or we started moving towards uh, another kind of sensor which is called CMOS sensor. And now we are still working on how to, to improve sensors even, even better. And then now in, in market you would find uh, most uh, good cam, most of the cameras now switch to uh, CMOS and there is a lot of controversy that CCD is better or CMOS is better as far as the quality of images are concerned. But uh, as far as the technological advancements are concerned and as far as the 
Uh, as quick processing is concerned, when we re require, you know, to take pictures on a higher frame rate or something, CMOS sensor are still better because each pixel is read, sim you know, directly and simultaneously together. Right? CCD sensor had a problem that, you know, you, you need to linearly read uh, all the data from, from the sensor and that is how, why the... Now there is another uh, good thing which is happening is the storage. The storage uh, uh, the, is uh, Im improving and we are getting faster restoring uh, devices. So that way we can have faster cameras. With digital there was a problem of lag, lag. there was a problem that the, these camera don't respond better, uh, they have uh, m more reaction time, they would require, you know, offload the data, then, then second picture is taken or a series of picture can be taken. This all is improving not only because the sensor, uh, you know, reading data from the sensor is improving, but also because the devices where we store like SD card or or several other cards which are used for um, uh, storing the picture the data which is produced by these camera, their capacity and along with their speed of taking the the uh, data has improved enormously, and and these are now um, either expressed in MBPS. So you can have a 9 Mbps card or 10 Mbps card, or they are denoted by a number written. So this is an 8 number or 10 number, so that you know that the, 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 the data card which you are using is fast enough to take larger size images and quicker images and, and, and a series of images which can be taken quickly. There's another revolution which is happening is that these camera traditionally, our DSLRs have traditionally larger sensors than most of the video cameras. And because of the technology and faster processing uh, retrieval and storage rate, we are moving to an era where series of images can be taken and they can take moving images, so they can take, they can work like a good video cameras. And these, the, the images produced by the still camera, which is uh, uh, a movie which is taken by a, by a digital SLR, has much better quality than traditional, n traditional video cameras. Because of the sensor sizes which are bigger in these, is where you can differentially focus, the depth of field you can control. There are a lot of things which are very unique to still photography and they can be used to take. So the next revolution would be, uh, be, be a series of still images simultaneously taken with a video, video image where you can have high resolution still images and a, and, and a, and a video um, clip together. Recap. And now it's time for a quick recap. Nature has beautiful colors and we are surrounded by a variety of colorful things. One can do good color photography during daytime or in the night or in any lighting condition providing one knows how to use lighting, how to control exposure, camera, lenses and composition. All forms of photography have evolved from monochrome photography. Color film is black and white film with three layers of emulsion. Each layer has a colored coupler that makes the resulting black metallic silver deposits in the negative respond to colors in the visible spectrum, red, green and blue. Digital photography employs a silicone sensor that records focused light falling onto it in much the same way that light rays reaching the film expose that portion of the film. Therefore, all photography has evolved from the original techniques created to record light rays onto silver halides. That is all that we had for you in this episode. Till the next time, it's a goodbye.